Hey, good day. My name is Matt Hines. I'm the Vice President of Marketing at CyberCloud. We're joined today by one of our technical experts, Hash Rashakanda, who's our VP of Product and Solutions Engineering. Hash, uh, to jump right in. Yeah, t- today's uh, environment is completely different. DLP uh, traditionally has worked within the enterprise perimeter. Uh, now there is no perimeter. Enterprise data has gone to the cloud and users are everywhere, especially in the remote work situation. They're logging in from the unmanaged devices, right? Their own laptops, their own mobile devices. And that broad uh, network access of the cloud is also uh, another uh, aspect, right? Put together, uh, these days, enterprises don't own the network. They don't own the devices, right? They don't own the application. But still, the needs of uh, compliance, the needs of uh, conforming to the best security practices, um, all those still apply. So that's the challenge, right? How do you work with uh, the uh, couple of things you have control on? Uh, Number one, uh, the identity, and number two, the data, right? These are the two things that the enterprises are running today. But all the other requirements from the security and compliance standpoint, they still apply uh, to the cloud situation. So that's the biggest challenge that... uh, uh, we have been hearing uh, from pretty much every customer. A good point to start talking about, you know, what is the way to actually handle this? Yes. Um, a, a good DLP policy engine, first of all, gives the information security personnel the ability to author uh, the exact policies that they want. So when you look at an advanced policy engine like Cypher Cloud Casby Plus, um, you, you would uh, expect to see that There is a notion of uh, the identity of the actor, right? Who is the subject? Is it a user, user group, right? Or a managed device or a managed device? Uh, And then what are they working on? Um, Now, uh, content-wise, what is the sensitivity? Uh, Is it already classified, right? And uh, does it match uh, the existing data in terms of uh, customer names or account numbers or credit card numbers or whatnot? Uh, Is it an image, right? Um, Do we need to run through optical character recognition and understand uh, the sensitivity of the the image or screen grab? Uh, And then data exists in multiple forms, structured or unstructured email, right? Does it contain any threats? So there are lots of, uh, you know, attributes uh, to to the object the user is uh, dealing with. And then uh, under what environment, right? Uh, is the interaction happening within a certain geographic region? Or, uh, is it happening from browsers or um, thick clients like a you know email client or uh, you know whatnot? And then what is the subject trying to do? Uh, is it an upload type of activity to the cloud or download? Or is it a collaboration uh, you know type of activity? So based on Uh, A number of these contextual attributes, um, the policy engine has to make a decision that, okay, this is allowed or denied denied at a very basic level. But uh, if it is something uh, that the user has to be aware of, uh, a policy is in place, then coach the user that, look, you are about to upload some sensitive data to the cloud. Uh, Are you sure about what you're doing, right? If so, provide the justification. Uh, or prove the identity if you're trying to dump out data from, uh, you know, HR directory, uh, you know, Salesforce accounts or whatnot. And then a whole bunch of other actions as well uh, to give the user a chance to remediate uh, any policy violation, uh, you know, remove public links. You know, we all know about S3, you know, public links, how popular they are. And then um, fit into the enterprise, you know, classification framework as well to... Uh, make use of the AAP type of, type of labelings. Uh, so uh, there are lots of moving parts to the uh, policy, but the information security has to be able to take um, many attributes that you are seeing on the screen, right, and be able to author a fine-grained policy so that the, the uh, cloud user is, is working within those guardrails, right, and the cloud user is able to actually perform business functions normally. So that's the power of uh, an advanced uh, policy engine. And I think, Mahesh, this is where you're actually going to you know, jump into product and uh, begin to walk people through some of the capabilities um, that we're working on uh, with our customers these days. Absolutely, yes. Uh, so let me get the um, demo set up.
and uh, I hope you're able to see my screen. So uh, I'm a you know a typical business user, and I have uh, the data that uh, uh, I have to work with, right? Perhaps it contains uh, you know credit card numbers. So let me go ahead and open the file. And uh, as you can see, um, the file has uh, certainly a number of uh, you know credit card numbers, financial financial information, right? Now, by policy of my company, when I try to upload uh, or send this uh, data to the cloud, uh, here I have the example of Box, right? When I try to upload the file to Box, by policy, I uh, should be you know made aware that look, this is not a normal file and it has PCA content, so here it is, right? Um, now the system is actually coaching me that a real user, you're dealing with sensitive content and it has PCI sensitive uh, you know, data, so by policy, um, you have to provide a justification, right? Um, if I were to upload a normal file that, uh, that doesn't have PCA data, I won't see this message, and of course you can customize the content and the logos and all that here um, to suit uh, your company's needs. So I go ahead and up upload the document uh, to Box, and uh, the document is up there, um, and I can open it and make use of uh, uh, the file, right, um, like I should be. So a very powerful use case to make sure that uh, the uh, content is, uh, you know, uh, can be uploaded uh, under the guardrails. Right. Um, so next, I'm going to jump to Teams. Right, Microsoft Teams. Um, we have seen an explosion of uh, collaboration uh, amongst, especially the remote uh, workers. They are all, you know, sitting at their home, right, trying to work, and then there are messages going between the teams, uh, between the members of the teams, right. Now it's very easy to you know, fat finger a user ID or you um, know whatnot and and share content that should not be shared, right? So let's take a look at the secure uh, collaboration use case. Uh, in this case, we are starting a conversation, right, and uh, picking you know sensitive content uh, from um, you know my system here, uploading that to Teams, and then. Uh, there is the ability to, you know, share the content, right? The teams very common um, in a typical enterprise. You know, thousands of shares happen on a daily basis. So what I'm doing here is to pick up the file and then uh, open up uh, the sharing aspect, right? And I'm sharing. And, um, you know, I might have picked it's very easy to actually um, pick the wrong user ID of an unauthorized user uh, from the list, right? I, I, maybe, you know, my ignorance, uh, uh, it's an accident, but either way, the collaboration should not be allowed in this particular case, but I went ahead and uh, tried that anyway as the user. And the product, right? CASB product has the capability to apply the policy. So first of all, it's actually you know, scanning the content, right? Just to put this into perspective, the DLP engine is scanning the content, understanding that the content has PCA data and collaborating or sharing the file with unauthorized users is not allowed. And then it actually has um, removed, right? The uh, user that I you know, shared with earlier, right? So very powerful uh, case here. There are lots of other uh, you know, related use cases as well uh, to post messages, uh, to kind of uh, add uh, members to the Teams channel, right? Uh, that that's not allowed by policy, etc. So all those aspects are covered by um, the, the policy engine by uh, combining uh, DLP or content scanning uh, with a number of other aspects that we already looked at, like users, groups, right? The collaboration type is it a internal sharing or external sharing or whatnot. We are seeing similar things in Slack as well. Yeah. All right, so let me go ahead and uh, jump to OneDrive. Um, in this particular use case, we're gonna basically look at the, uh, the ability to read existing enterprise classifications, right? And then based on the content inspection. So here uh, I'm showing that uh, the 
um, you know, content actually the, the file has sensitive information, uh, financial information, right? And then by policy, um, it should be actually highly confidential data, right? So the document was created by somebody, they classified that as sensitive. We can actually look at uh, the labeling as well in just a minute. So let me go ahead and open the label here and then show the uh, AAP label, right? So here you see that it is actually uh, classified as sensitive. Now, what we are going to do is to upload uh, this file to Microsoft OneDrive. And then uh, the policy behind the scenes, DLP policy is actually um, uh, configured to read the existing uh, labels and also scan for the sensitive content, right? Uh, for the presence of financial information. And then if the uh, financial information is there, of course the document should be classified as uh, highly confidential, right? So the policy will actually reclassify the document um, to, to make sure that uh, the, the uh, information policy is keeping uh, classification up to date. So let me go ahead and open up the uh, classification, the labels here, and scroll down there, there it is, right? So as you can see, uh, now the document uh, is, is um, um, uh, reclassified as highly confidential. So this kind of shows the power of the platform, right? Uh, you you uh, apply a label to the best of your knowledge, then somebody else edited the data, uh, the document, added some financial information, which is at a higher level of classification, run it through the DLP engine, and then uh, the DLP engine is capable of reading the existing label, also understand the DLP content and reclassify. So this kind of uh, shows how the enterprise boundaries can be switched to harness uh, you know, the clouds up there. Next up, I'm going to jump to service now. And here, um, again, very, very common use case for an enterprise user to work with the structured data clouds like ServiceNow, Salesforce, Success Factors, Workday, right? And it's very easy to actually put sensitive content into uh, you know, description uh, fields or whatnot, right? Which are uh, you know, magnets for sensitive data. So uh, I'm entering the social security number here, right? And then uh, submitting this uh, new problem, right? Uh, record to ServiceNow. Now by policy, SSNs cannot go in there, right? So CASB product uh, intervened and uh, um, masked the information, right? The SSN now is uh, removed and it's been masked uh, to stay, stay compliant with the policy. So very powerful use case um, to, to, again, work with not only unstructured data, but also the uh, structured information. Right, moving on to the next uh, use case. Um, this is, again, a very uh, popular use case uh, to um, allow um, download of sensitive information to managed devices and deny uh, downloads to unmanaged devices. Again, I just want to remind uh, everyone that the goal here is not to prevent the user from going to Salesforce, right? We want all the enterprise users, all the authenticated users to be able to make good use of Salesforce, but if they're trying to dump out sensitive data to unmanaged uh, devices or unsafe locations, uh, detect that and, and disallow just that aspect, right? So here I have a browser and, uh, you know, the certificate that we have put into the browser uh, to uh, denote that it is a managed device, right? So the managed device basically is logging into uh, Salesforce, of course, through a single sign-on process here, which is very common. And once we are uh, in Salesforce, Right, we're gonna look at uh, the um, reports is a you know, very common use case, right? Whether you have a list of accounts or whatnot containing sensitive information. So as the user, I'm able to actually view the uh, Salesforce accounts. And I'll try to download this information. 
right? And remember, I'm on a managed device provided by the organization, so I'm all good here. So I should be able to export the information and uh, you know make use of the information that I just downloaded from the cloud. And as you can see, the uh, download is all good. Right now, I'm gonna go to the unmanaged device. Right, I switched browsers and I'm going to the unmanaged device, and I'm trying to download information, right, from Salesforce. Again, same account, same user ID, same account, uh, same report. Right, when I try to export, right, I expect the product to intervene and say that well, you're actually an unmanaged device, right? Uh, as you can see out here, you're on managed device. So by policy, you're not allowed to dump out this data, right? Sensitive data onto unmanaged device. You can do the same thing for uh, the unsafe locations as well, meaning that if the device is actually in the United States, allow for that, but if the device has moved to, you know, Asia, right, deny. Um, so very powerful way of allowing the user to make use of the cloud, but prevent, uh, you know, unauthorized downloads. And then um, we're going to move on to the uh, next use case, which is, uh, you know, email, right? Very powerful um, uh, tool for any enterprise, right? As much as we take email for granted, it's an essential service. And uh, uh, how many times have you uh, seen an email coming from one of your customers or, you know, uh, uh, fellow employees that look, I accidentally sent that email to you. Can you please, you know, delete that, right? And they are trying to recall their message. And the reason why that happened is they accidentally, uh, uh, you know, without their uh, knowledge, right, uh, that a particular document should not be shared, they went ahead and sent it and somebody prompted them that, look, you sent that email and you should not have. So, um, you know, the, the, again, that's a very um, relevant uh, scenario in which DLP can be applied. Um, you know, the content can be scanned and uh, the uh, accidental uh, emailing to unauthorized users can be prevented, right? So here, we are going to author an email and uh, send it to some Hotmail or Gmail address, right? And then um, provide sensitive content as, as uh, part of the email. So we are uh, going to go ahead and attach uh, the same credit card file that uh, we have seen earlier. And then, uh, you know, send this email out. Now, what the CASI product does is to um, examine the email content using the DLP engine and DLP policy, and then uh, make sure that the untrusted users are actually removed. So obviously you cannot see the email that's not delivered right but uh, you know we are showing the audit uh, of the product um, you can see uh, that the user has actually um, tried to send the email uh, to a gmail account and uh, that has been you know removed right because the uh, content has pci data so um, uh, protecting the data whether it appears uh, you know, in unstructured uh, nature of the cloud or structured nature, such as service now or email, right? All of those use cases can be addressed by uh, the DLP engine. So at Cypher Cloud, uh, we uh, pay uh, close attention to DLP. It's it's the heart of uh, CASB as such. Um, so here, uh, you know, we're going to show actually how uh, elaborate the uh, policy engine is, right? Out of the box, we provide more than 1,000 uh, templates and uh, data types. And uh, just to show uh, an example of uh, the library, right, um, the DLP library that we provide, um, if you were to take a policy like HIPAA, you can see how extensive it is, right, uh, which is a collection of multiple multiple identifiers, you know, by means of regular expressions, uh, keywords, uh, thousands of keywords, etc. right? So the ability to actually combine these uh, data types and uh, templates in a way that uh, is effective for the organization that reduces false positives and also covers for all the uh, you know data that should be uh, flagged um, as a violation by the DLP engine. 
So again, uh, getting into the details here, you can see how they elaborate uh, the HIPAA, uh, you, you know, data type is within our product. So let's take a look at the policy, right, uh, real quick. Uh, once you have the rich uh, DLP content library, you can actually configure a policy. Uh, we already walked through what kind of attributes are possible, right, as part of the policy engine. So you can uh, pick uh, the attributes, right, users, uh, uh, groups or whatnot. You can pick uh, the type of DLP uh, rule template out of the box. We provide 1,000 plus, again. And uh, you have the capability to actually control sharing, right, um, here. And then based on all these input, um, you know, parameters, you have the capability to take actions. Uh, you can take action on the content. You can take action on the collaboration aspects. And after you have taken one action, you have the capability to apply secondary actions as well, right? For example, you can say that, well, I want the document to be redacted, the uh, collaboration to be removed and also send a notification uh, to the user, right, um, as an example. So multiple actions are possible all through one framework, a single policy. So uh, this is the power of the DLP engine. A single policy can be applied to multiple clouds and then uh, multiple actions can be taken um, for a single policy violation as well. And then um, applying DLP policy is one thing, but uh, the governance aspects are very important as well, right? To be able to understand what the policy engine did. Um, again, when it comes to governance of DLP, uh, you know, knowing the behavior of, uh, you know, DLP policies, reducing false positives by even deferring the enforcement actions, right? And then, um, uh, you know, even, Combining the intelligence of the DLP with other aspects of, uh, uh, you know, information go governance, right, security governance, such as taking all those inputs into enterprise sim and drawing higher levels of intelligence. That's also very important. So the dashboard uh, helps you see um, how the policy has been acting, right, uh, whether the policy is... Uh, uh, remediating something, right, encrypting uh, content using DRM or whatnot. Uh, so we provide multiple charts out of the box to slice and dice to the data. It's all interactive. You can click anywhere and then get to the details. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, within the platform, you know, there are uh, multiple events uh, that we observe, right, whether the user is actually interacting with the cloud in the inline mode or using APIs, et cetera. So we uh, collect the information, we curate it, we uh, enrich it, right? Uh, and uh, we uh, provide 60 plus attributes for every user cloud touch point, which is very powerful. Uh, this notion of uh, user and entity behavior analytics resulting from the DLP policy actions can actually be fed into the, your enterprise sim where you can correlate that information and draw some higher levels of intelligence. So. This is the kind of framework that is available as part of the CASB product to take an advanced DLP engine uh, to be able to apply that to every user cloud interaction and then uh, fit that into uh, the enterprise governance process as well. But I know we touched uh, on a lot of points, a uh, number of use cases, number of clouds, right? And uh, uh, the, the uh, governance aspects as well. Thanks very much, Mahesh. Uh, great demo, and I think uh, very indicative of the kind of DLP policy um, oversight management capabilities that we can provide and that our customers are coming to us for today. Yeah, thanks, Mahesh. Thank you.